In today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to use Google Maps while traveling. Now, personally, I've kind of always been an Apple Maps man, but for the last month, I've exclusively been using Google Maps and I got some tips to show you. Now, I'm actually gonna be using this video as a company paid work trip to go to New York and see my favorite team play, but I'll be using Google Maps along the way. And if you have any specific tip you're looking for, I'll have all my chapters down below so you can just search through and find the tip that you wanna learn more about. But let's start off with my first tip, and that's actually using Google Gemini within Google Maps. So since I'm on an iPhone, the easiest way to access Google Gemini is hitting the microphone in the top right corner. Can I get directions to the Reno airport? And she'll even ask me what terminal. There's only one terminal in the Reno airport, so I'll just click that one and it'll show me a 10 minute drive away. The main way I've been using Google Maps is actually through CarPlay and while driving, since I live in Reno, Nevada, we don't really have a lot of public transportation or I'm not walking a lot of places, but I do use Google Maps on CarPlay all the time. Even if I know where I'm going, it's nice to have Google Maps to tell me the traffic that's on the way, if there's any accidents or something that's slowing my route down or to pick a different route, and I'll show you a little nuance about that in just a second. So let me just show you a couple things that I've learned while using Google Maps for driving. First of all, to get Gemini, since I'm on an iPhone, you have to hit the screen first, then search, and then you can hit the little microphone on the top. Reno Airport. And that's how you can access Gemini, and she can give you directions where to go. So Reno International Airport, start. Okay, so here's where the cool stuff really begins. Tap the screen again, hit the settings button, and you can turn on satellite map. I'm a sucker for satellite map. I like it if I'm walking my dog, I can look for parks. I really like using satellite map. I wish Apple Maps had it. But there's even more. Back in the settings app, you can turn on traffic, which shows you traffic patterns going on. So you can manually adjust your route if you see that there's a lot of traffic in a certain area and you just wanna avoid it, like a school zone or something like that. Even more, you can change the map colors. Now, uh, I can put it on night, which doesn't really work for satellite mode, but if you didn't have satellite, you can turn it darker. You can even have north up, which I really like. It helps me direct better. I like when north is on the top of the screen. Okay, so this next feature kind of comes from Waze. You can hit this little orange triangle in the corner here, and you can actually report any slowdowns that you have on the road. And this is helpful because if anyone else reports it, you can also see it while you're driving. Now, I know that some people kind of don't like this because the alerts pop up and you have to either hit to make them dismiss and go away or they pop up too late or they're not accurate anymore. But personally, I think it's kind of a nice feature. And if you don't want these alerts popping up while you're in CarPlay, you can actually just go to the settings app and hit your alert options and put none. And that will keep those notifications from popping up on your screen. But for me personally, I like to keep them on, at least in Reno, it's a smaller city and I don't have too many, they're not too distracting and they're usually kind of helpful. And my last tip for you is specifically while traveling with Google Maps, you can actually go back into settings, hit route options, and you can select things like avoiding tolls, avoid ferries, avoid highways, prefer the HOV lane, and prefer saving fuel. I think that's all really handy and you can have those selected on, so if you ask Gemini for a route to somewhere and those are already selected, she'll give you the route that fits with those settings. And I think that's really cool. All right, I'm gonna head to the airport and let's go to New York City. My next tip is showing you how Google Maps can navigate you through an airport. The Dallas-Fort Worth Airport has over 171 gates and sees over 189,000 travelers per day on average. So even if I didn't have Google Maps, it can be kind of tough to get through this airport. But luckily I do have Google Maps because I didn't sleep at all on that plane. So uh, let me show you what it can do. So you can actually just hop on Google Maps. You can go to the airport and you can actually just search like, I need to go to gate 24, Dallas-Fort Worth. Okay, let me show you another thing you can do with Google Maps real quick. Although I do need to go because it arrives at 5.27 a.m. if I started walking now. And that's when my boarding starts, so I gotta do this fast. But if you just search the airport like this, click on that, you can actually head over to this directory button. And from here, you can pick uh, restaurants, clubs, rental cars. Now, let's say I wanted a coffee on my way, even though I don't have time. I'll click food and drink, and I can actually scroll through and see. And if I had my route in, I could actually see what's on the way. It's also worked for stores and malls. Like let's say if you're in a mall and you wanna to go to a specific store, it'll tell you what level it's on and where it's located and give you directions to it. So that's pretty cool. My flight's gonna start boarding soon, so I gotta get going. And I'm not gonna film my route over there because I don't want to. All right, after a three and a half hour flight from Reno to Dallas, and then another three hour flight to New York City, I have finally arrived. And I got a busy day ahead of me and I'm exhausted. So I opted to take Lyft as Google suggested, also because it's covered by the company. And at the Ligardi airport, Google Maps directed me exactly to the pickup spot and it couldn't have been easier. Oh man, my boss will not stop texting me. I forgot I had trainings on the calendar. Oh well, I'm still filming this video, I'm sure I'll understand. But for now, I don't wanna to respond to these messages and he wants to know where I am. So with Google Maps, I can easily share my ETA on my route to the hotel. 
Or let's say, for example, I wasn't currently en route to anything and I was just, say, buying a jersey at a Yankee team shop. I could click on my profile up here and then share my location with it. Now that I'm checked into my hotel, it's so tempting to just go back there and sleep, but I gotta make the most out of this opportunity, right? So let's get some coffee. And that's actually where my next tip comes in. I'm very tired and sleep deprived and I don't feel like socializing with anyone, besides you, of course. And I just wanna go to a place that's kind of not so busy. So in the app, you can actually hit busy area and it'll show you how busy a certain area of the city is that you're looking at at that time you're looking at it. You can also use it more specifically for certain coffee shops and certain restaurants. Okay, another tip I have for you, I won't get to use here, but if you know you're gonna be in a remote location without cell service, you can actually download the maps on Google Maps. Now, how to do that is you hit your little icon on the top right corner, you go to offline maps. From here, you can select your own map and then you can choose how big or how small you wanna make your map that you're downloading. So I know I'm gonna to go to Yankee Stadium, I'm gonna download this map around Yankee Stadium to use while I'm in the subway. Downloads in the bottom right corner, it starts downloading. It shouldn't take too long, but of course it depends on how big the map you're downloading is. Now my map is downloaded, download is complete. Just use maps normally and when you run out of service, it actually switches to your offline map automatically for you. It's a very handy feature, especially if you know ahead of time that you're gonna be in a remote location. Okay, so here's the deal. We got about seven hours until the gates open at New Yankee Stadium, and I haven't planned anything for us to do today. And I'm assuming you haven't either because you're just a camera and I'm just a sleep deprived boy. So what we're gonna do is make Google Gemini tell us what to do, basically. Let's ask her. What's fun to do in New York City today? Sponsored, sponsored. First things first, we got the Friends experience, the one in New York City. That'll be fun. I have seen Friends, so don't judge me, but it's been a while, so that'll be that'll be a refresher. The Channel Gardens, never been there either. That looks fun. And Questing New York. I don't know what that is either, but that's what we're doing today, so buckle up, let's go. Okay, so I'm using Google Maps to take me to the Friends experience. It worked very well, it took exactly how long it said it would. I got to walk through this park and even got to see this mural that looks just like me. Now, I do have a problem with Gemini sending me here. I should have been maybe more specific in my prompt because it turns out this friends experience is mostly for friends. It's a lot of photo ops. And don't get me wrong, if you're a friends fan, this is very cool and has a lot of history. But the very first thing you do when you walk in it is as a group, or solo in my case, is take a photo on the couch in front of the fountain. Here's my photo. You do get to see the recreated sets, memorabilia, and a lot of cool history about the show, so I did enjoy my time here. And the staff was amazing and very helpful filming me while capturing my photos. Hi. Friend. It's just me. No, don't worry. Uh, you just know that's it. Don't worry. Okay, perfect. Okay, okay. Use your bed. Struggle, struggle, yes! I did have to pay for the photos afterwards, which is totally fine, no big deal, but... Next, we are off to the Channel Gardens, and Google Maps suggests I take the train. It made it seamless, told me exactly where to enter the subway, to take the correct train, showed me all the stops on the way, and the ETA was once again accurate to the minute. The Channel Gardens were interesting, a very cool place to hang out and grab some food or maybe do some shopping, but I didn't really have to do either of that stuff, so I just looked up my next point of interest, which was Questing New York, and I actually did some research on this place, and it seemed really cool, like a treasure hunt type activity to do with friends or your family while visiting to learn more about the city, but I didn't really have time to do that whole thing, and I really needed an Aaron Judge jersey, so I went to the MLB store instead. All right, I got my jersey. Let's head to the stadium. The doors open in 30 minutes and it's a bit of a train ride from here. So we'll use Google Maps to get there. Again, I can't reiterate enough how simple Google Maps makes it to travel this city. I got on the right train. I never missed my stop. And it's obviously impossible to miss my stop at Yankee Stadium. So I hope that these tips were helpful for you and maybe they can even help you out on your next trip. But I really do like that Google's adding more and more features into their Maps app. And I also think that Gemini is far superior to Siri right now. Just, you know, remember to be maybe a little more specific when you prompt her. Anyways, if you made it this far in this video, I really appreciate it. Consider liking it if you wanna help me out over here and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more videos like this. But that's it for me. I'll see you in the next one.